there are more than 460,000 NCAA students in America. That is a lot. Over 200,000 of these athletes are female who compete at the highest level at their age for different sports, such as soccer, basketball, volleyball, and tennis, just to list a few. On the other hand, according to the Centers, Centers for Disease Control and Prevention's 1991 through 2019 high school youth risk behavior survey data, about 57% of high school students played on at least one sports team in the past year. So as this is saying, um, many of you guys might have played a high school sport or you might not have. While you may be thinking right now, this issue doesn't apply to me. I didn't play a high school sport or a collegiate sport. Why should this matter? So think about all the people that you know. Maybe it's your best friend, an acquaintance, your cousin, um, me, different athletes in this class, or even your best friend's little sister or brother. Allowing for transgender people to participate in other um, gender sports takes away from other individuals. Whether it's about equality or fairness, in our society, there is not a way in which every party wins. By allowing for transgender individuals to participate in specifically women's sports, we are taking away from the, um, the equality out of sports and taking away from the freedom of specifically women that we so much desire to say, oh, go feminism. In order for there to be equality for all, the NCAA needs to make a policy change allowing for female-born athletes to participate only with female-born athletes male-born athletes to participate only with male-born athletes, and for transgender athletes to participate with other transgender athletes. One scenario to keep in mind is imagine if me, a female born at birth or female at birth, became a transgender athlete and wanted to participate in football. I don't know about you, but if I played football, I would get absolutely demolished. One of the reasons why I would get demolished is due to the differences in genetics. I, as a female, had different levels of hormones and have different hormones in general and a different body composition than that of males. This brings up the issue that there needs to be an equal playing field. According to a comparative study on strength between American college male and female students conducted by Guang Chen, the um, muscle strength of female students is significantly lower than that of male students on specifically strength of arm, upper body and chest, shoulder, leg, and abdominal. The study found that females have a 37 to 68% of muscle strength of males in general. As you can see, they have more muscles than us. They also have more muscle composition. Muscle strength is one of the characteristics that defines athletes and their performance. So basically, if you are a football player and you have more um, muscle mass, you're gonna perform better than that of less muscle mass. So muscle strength can also change the one that needs the way that one needs to train, which may indicate that males can train at higher intensities than women can. The physiological and morphological gender differences can be seen by different training regimens. One of the reasons why women have different training regimens is due to women having a reduced oxygen carrying capacity, according to sportsmen authors Lewis Kamen and Hodgson. Hemoglobin levels correlate with testosterone levels. Hemoglobin is very important for endurance as it is in the blood and transports oxygen throughout the entire body and the muscles. So the more hemoglobin you have, the more oxygen you're gonna to get to your body and to your muscles to replenish them. Hormone factors also lead to initial, greater initials of high, high density lipoproteins in which women in women, which causes a smaller change in the total cholesterol high density lipoprotein ratio than with aerobic training in men. Men also have testosterone, which gives them an athletic advantage and increases their muscle mass and strength. My second point is that transgenders have trans that have transitioned after puberty have already developed enough testosterone in their body. In previous years in the NCAA, high testosterone levels have prevented some female-born athletes from competing in their women's sports in previous years. So what makes this different? No matter if the individual has been taking testosterone for a year, which is the female, um, the female hormone, they will still have enough testosterone in their body for them to have an athletic advantage over women. Take, for instance, the University of Pennsylvania swimmer, Leah Thomas. According to the Philly Voice, biologically, Leah holds an unfair advantage over competition in the women's category as evidenced by her rankings that have bounced from number 462 as a male to number one as a female. 
months of testosterone reduction therapy do not minimize the transgender's athletic advantage. They may be reduced, but the muscle mass and strength and the um, is still evident as seen by her performance in the NCAA Swimming Championship. There have also been other instances where this has been seen, including the U.S. military. A U.S. military personnel who transitioned while in her service still maintained an edge over a woman after a year of feminizing hormone therapy. They had a strength advantage such as explosiveness, endurance, and lean body mass. Sports are a way for students to be unified as individuals as long for them to have an outlet for their school and outside issues. Playing in college is also for a way for many people to go to college who wouldn't have the chance and the funds to get their education. Many people are not able to afford edu or their college education, which is why they use sports to get a college education. Allowing for transgender, transgender athletes to compete in their sport as opposite gender um, heavily affects them. Ed Hart, a former NCAA athlete, expressed her concern when saying, the progress that we as women have made over the last 50 years will be for nothing and we'll be forced to be spectators in our own sport. So I personally believe that there's other alternatives to allow for transgender athletes to participate in sports, just like both um, the female and male leagues. The NCAA should be able to have a section in a different alliance for transgender athletes to participate in sports. Overall, there is a difference between inclusion and fairness. While there should be a gender equality and freedoms, science regarding male and female um, physiology yeah, um, suggests that transgender women have an advantage over a biological woman. Also, there is the aspect of many people are angry about the subject and it is um, degrading other transgender women as they are getting made fun of, they are getting things said about them on Twitter and Facebook and other social media platforms. They're also not able to compete at their fullest because they have that um, thought behind their back of their minds that they are being judged and they're not being accepted for who they are. So I suggest that there needs to be a policy change allowing for all different athletes to participate, but allowing for it to be fair and for everyone to have a, um, a one-up. Yep, sorry, um, that was terrible, but um, he didn't let me skip this and because I have an organic quiz tomorrow. So thanks for listening. It will improve in the real speech.